well, I hope you like the hat. This is all part of being creative and being a fashion designer. You can kind of, you know, dress a little bit crazy every now and again and get away with it because you're the arty type of person. But I'm not just an arty type of person. I'm also an entrepreneur. So this is the space to be and the place to be. If you are taking your sewing or fashion a bit more serious and you want to start your own business. So let's talk about about your space and your setup where you're going to start from home and you don't really have much space. You've got to realize that as you are sewing more and more for clients or you're starting your own little online collection or collection, people are going to start tapping in to, you know, your designs and start speaking about you and your business is just going to grow. This is such a sustainable business if you just do it correctly. Let's get back to setup. When I first started my sewing um, career as a fashion designer student, I was working in the kitchen. And while I was busy studying and, you know, sewing at night in my kitchen and in the lounge, wherever I had space, and eventually I just ran out of um, space in the house. I asked my parents if I could use their garage. So I, I set up myself in my mother's garage and she helped me, you know, tile it out and create a little fitting room, you know, put some carpets out. Um, you know, I looked at secondhand stores back then. I, I went around the house, my mother's house, my house, and looked for all the nicest things I could put together and create this, you know, very creative but yet very professional look of little, you know, fitting room. One section was my production where was my tables and I bought secondhand cabinets and stored all my fabrics and my patterns and I painted them all to try and create sort of a bit of a look and a theme because you're creative you you don't you know what it takes to you know take a little bit of paint and paint a, a cupboard or two find a carpet that matches and you know get some fabric to make a little curtaining for a divider or a little changing room for your clients and just make it look absolutely professional with a nice color theme or a look that you're following and that's already a start and it won't cost you that much money but you've got to realize that you know if you're going to have people coming to your home to try on well Okay, you can't have cats all over the place and kids running around, you know, and dogs. Don't get me wrong, love cats, love dogs, but, you know, this is a professional environment that you need to set up so that when a client walks in, it looks clean, okay? They understand it might be production area, so kind of subdivide if you can. You know, if you have a spare room, a guest room that you're hardly using, ask yourself, you know, how often do I have guests? But you know, how important is my new business that I'm busy growing and maybe take over the guest room? If you, how about giving me some love and press that subscribe button and a share and a like. And this is Tanya Sutherland sharing 34 years and more of, you know, sewing and fashion experience as a designer, sharing all the knowledge that I have gone through and the mistakes that I have made. I'll be sharing it with you as well so you can avoid making those mistakes and save some money and save some time and just to grow your business so that's about your space find space you know in the house that you can set up and create more of a permanent space because you are growing your business i eventually um, actually bought another property for my business um which to me was an absolute goal that i had set for myself um, but since then, I have now sold the property, bought a new house, and now I'm back to square one, taking over an entire floor for my business. But my business is more and more online, but I still have some clients coming to my studio to meet me in person and do a consultation. So I still have to set up a room to make it look as professional as possible. Okay, let's look at sewing machines. To get started, you know, intermediate to more advanced type of sewing machine might be more beneficial for you because you're doing a lot of uh, units and you're putting through a lot of garments and a good overlocker. 
and then decide later on as your business is growing what other machines you can get now i love my industrial sewing machine it's been with me for 20 years the one that i have right now and it's produced so many garments and brought me so much income my machine is my gem i love it to bits it goes with me wherever i go i have a permanent setup for it in my classroom because i'm still teaching designing and sewing and dressmaking classes as well so I have to work around the space that I have and you should try and do the same. So have a look at perhaps a garage you can take over. Is there, do you have maybe, you know, a Wendy house outside in the garden? Do you have a guest room that you're hardly using? Do you have a, a very large lounge area or a very large dining area that you can perhaps take over a section and use it as production for yourself and perhaps put some um, dividers in so you can actually divide it off from the rest of the house? Unfortunately, you know, if you're working from home and you have a business from home, you know, you need to decide, you know, where do you entertain, you know, where can you divide it? And how do you make it possible? But I think since COVID, a lot of people have realized that we are working from home. Things have changed. So make it work for yourself.